So any questions? That's it for public key cryptography. Wow. Uh, okay, the next chapter, chapter five. Yeah. I know you're gonna hate to hear this, but it's the last chapter on cryptography. I know, it's sad, isn't it? Okay, so anyway, hash functions. It's another important uh, kind of fundamental concept in cryptography. The plus plus refers to there's a few kind of uh, odds and ends that don't fit in anywhere else. They're not exactly cryptography, but they're related to cryptography in some way, so I sort of stuff them in at the end here. So it turns out this chapter is a little bit longer uh, than some of the others, but I don't think it's any more difficult. So uh, hang in there. We're almost through the cryptography. And then we'll be ready for a test. Isn't that great? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so anyway. Uh, this quote here, I'm sure my memory only works one way, Alice remarked. I can't remember things before they happened, of course. So it's a, and the queen says, it's a poor memory that only works backwards. What sort of things do you remember best, Alice ventured to ask. Oh, the things that happened the week after next, the queen replied in a careless tone. I love that quote. Uh, anyway, the reference to hash functions is the one way. Okay, hash functions are going to be one way functions, as we'll see. And this kind of refers to the plus plus part, okay? So there's this uh, poem, it's very long actually, uh, in Through the Looking Glass, and it starts off like this. A boat beneath a sunny sky lingered onward dreamily in an evening of July. Children three and that nestle near, eager eye and willing ear, blah, 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 okay? Well, okay, one of the t plus plus topics is uh, steganography, which literally means hidden writing. So is there any hidden message in this poem, you think? Yes, Alice. Alice, very good. Okay, where is Alice? First, first letter. Of first letter of each line, right? And actually, the person, this, the, the Alice and Alice in Wonderland is Alice Liddell something or another, and it's all there, right? So there's no question about who the poem, you know, who the books are actually really, really about because they put it there. You know, it's called an acrostic. So, anyway. okay, okay. So first of all, hash functions. Now, again, hash functions. You, you've heard this term from other courses, right? You use hash functions for various things in uh, other CS courses. There's some similarity here to what you talk about as hash functions, but we have very stringent requirements on our hash functions. So you should keep in mind we are talking about cryptographic hash functions. Cryptographers, there's an they're an anal retentive bunch. You know we have very stringent requirements. Okay. So kind of forget that other stuff you learned. Okay. Just focus on uh, these cryptographic hash functions. Okay. Motivation. What do we need these things for? Okay, let's suppose Alice wants to sign a message in. How do we do that? How does she do that? Private. Uses her private key. Okay, so that's easy enough. Just apply the private key to it. Okay, so let's call that S because that's what she signed. Now she has to send M and S to Bob. Why can't she just send S to Bob? <laughs> it's useless. <laughs> Why? He, she signed it. There's no way to verify it. There's no way to verify, okay? I mean, think about it. Bob could apply Alice's public key to this. Even if it's wrong, something comes out. It's just a mathematical operation, right? How would he know whether it's what's supposed to come out or not? He has to have something to compare to. Okay, so you have to send both. I mean, this would be sort of like sending the Mac without the plain text, right? You can't do that. Okay, so you got to have this to compare to. All right. Okay, well, what's wrong with that? And so what? It works. Is there any potential problem here? You can use the public key to decrypt the. Address. Well, that's true. There's no confidentiality here. Okay, that's fine. We're just worried about, say, integrity, non-repudiation kind of stuff. Then we're okay. Signing is just integrity and non-repudiation. It's not confidentiality. You have to send twice as much. Data. You have to send twice as much data, right? And not only that, you know this message here could be many gigabytes of data. It could be enormous, right? Okay, this operation is going to take you forever, okay, because this is a private key operation, okay, so public key cryptography is slow. That's going to take forever, and not only that, once you're done doing that very expensive uh, operation, you have to send twice as many bits to Alice as you would otherwise, 
or the bottom. Okay. So it's costly in two senses. It's costly in the computation to do the uh, encryption. It's costly in the sense of wasted bandwidth. So the question is, can we do something better? Uh, so it's costly to compute ANSEN, as we said. Okay, suppose instead we have this function h, h or hash uh, of m, which compresses m down to a small number of bits. Okay, and does this in a way so it's sort of like a fingerprint. Okay, you know your fingerprint is a relatively small number of bits compared to you, but yet it uniquely identifies you. Okay, so ideally that would be the case. So we can compress m down to a to a small number of bits. If we could do that. Then instead of signing M itself, we could sign the hash of M. Okay, now how would the verification work here? What would Bob do? He would receive again, he would receive S and he would receive M. How would he verify the signature? Compute the hash first. Well he could use the public key here, but then he gets H of M. He doesn't get M. What does he compare that with? he hashes this guy, okay? Because the hash function is a public function. There's no key involved. So he can hash this guy. He can apply the public key here and make sure those two things match. Okay, if they match, he's happy, okay? Okay. Got that? Now what's the benefit here? Digitally signing uh, we're digitally signing something small, okay, that's good because that's a costly operation, and <coughs> we're sending a small number of bits, okay, a small number of additional bits. You can't get away without sending the message, of course, but the extra bits that you send are just a relatively small number of bits, so it's a win in both uh, senses here. Professor? Yeah. I do not understand uh, why just setting S won't be sufficient, like, um... Okay, suppose you, we're trying to do an integrity check, right? Okay, so suppose you just send S. Suppose Trudy flips a few bits in there, okay? She could do that, right? Or just errors could occur. Now, what happens? You don't get S at the other end, you get S prime, right? Now, what does Bob do? Bob applies Alice's public key to S prime. He doesn't get in. How does he know he doesn't get in? He gets something. I think of RSA. What does it mean to apply the public key? It means you do modular exponentiation, you reduce it mod something. Something comes out. Some bits come out. How do you know those are not the correct bits? So you got to have something to compare it to, and that's what you compare it to. Okay. So if you have both of those, if errors occur in this guy or in this guy or in both, you almost for sure detect it. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, we're going to sign this H of M because it's smaller and all that sort of stuff, and it's uh, more efficient in every sense here, as we said. Okay, I think we said all that. Okay. So the question then is, what about this H of M? Because now our security doesn't just depend on the public key crypto system. Our security depends on H of M. Okay, because we've introduced that as an important fundamental part of the signature. So suppose Trudy could find another message, call it M prime, that has the same hash as M. Okay. Now what? <laughs> I see your mouth moving, but no words are coming out. So what? She could just switch in front of us. Right, okay, so Trudy could just switch M with M prime, because now when you receive this, what are you going to do? You apply the pub private key to the public key to this, you get H of M. You apply the hash function to M prime, you get H of M prime. Those are the same, so the signature check passes. Okay, so the point is, by introducing this hash function, you know, the security not only depends on the public key system being secure, but it also depends on the hash function satisfying certain properties, such as we can't find another thing that hashes to the same guy. Okay. Okay, got that? Okay. Um, okay, so... Okay, so hash functions, cryptographic, in other words, we should always say here, cryptographic hash functions, but I'm going to get lazy and I'm just going to say hash functions, but I mean cryptographic hash functions. Okay, so what properties should cryptographic hash functions satisfy? A lot, okay. We want a lot of things from these functions. First thing we require is compression. 
meaning no matter what size input you put in, it gives us a small number of bits out. Okay, and in practice, it's a fixed number of bits, and it's something you know the hash functions used in practice could be 128 bit output, you know, 160 bit output, you know, 192. Uh, 256, something in that range, you know, a relatively small number of bits. Okay, it has to be efficient. I mean, think about it, if we're doing this signature thing, right, if it takes us more work to compress the thing down than it does to do the uh, private key operation, it's not really worth that much, okay? So it's got to be something relatively efficient. Now, in practice, uh, hash functions are very similar to block ciphers, okay, as far as efficiency, okay, so it's roughly comparable to uh, symmetric cipher encryption, which is, again, thousands of times faster than, you know, thousand times faster than a, a public key operation. Okay, we're going to also require these functions be one way, meaning if I give you a value and say this is, you know, h of x for some x, you cannot determine what x is. Okay, so it's one way in that sense. Given the output, you can't easily determine the input. These are kind of the crucial things as far as the signature thing we talked about. Um, these collision resistance properties. Okay, this says, given the input and the output, so I give you an x and I give you the corresponding h of x, okay, you can't find another guy that hashes to that same value, okay? Even stronger, the strong collision resistance says you can't find any two things that hash to the same value. Any two, all right? Now, do these collisions, do they exist? Are they out there? Of course. Yeah, yeah they have to be out there, why? What? You're compressing. In other words, your number of possible inputs is way, way larger than your number of possible outputs. So lots of different inputs have to hash to the same output. Lots and lots and lots. In other words, there have to be a huge, a really huge, vast number of collisions. This says, you know, it says, of course they exist, but you can't find them. You cannot even find one. <laughs> okay? Not even one. All right, so if you find even one collision for a hash function, it's considered broken, okay? So this is a really strong requirement here. We're really requiring a lot from these hash functions. So you might ask yourself, do these things even exist, really? Can we even build such a thing? I mean, come on, you're really asking a lot. 